In previous videos, we installed Unix on top of Windows. First, we used a program called Sigwin, and then we installed a version of Linux, a kind of Unix, called Ubuntu. Now, this time, we're going to use a program we installed called VirtualBox. You may recall that VirtualBox is a virtualization software that allows us to fool the computer into thinking it's actually many different kinds of computers. If we open VirtualBox from the Start Programs menu, it looks like this. If we click on the New button, we may create different virtual machines. Let's create a virtual machine called OpenSUSE 11. This is a version of Linux, and this time, even though we're installing it on top of Windows Vista, it thinks it's being installed on a physical piece of hardware. So this way, we could see the true behavior of Linux on its own machine without the expense of having to go out and buy the machine. If we click back for a minute, we see the VirtualBox software, virtualization software, requires a name to identify the virtual machine, and it will list it over here for when there's multiple virtual machines. And it also would like to know the kind of operating systems. All these are different kinds of operating systems available. Click Next. It asks us how much memory we'd like to use. And I'll just accept the default of 256. And it needs a hard drive or a disk to install upon. Right now it says no hard disk. Now in the real world, normally what you would have to do is go out and buy a hard disk. With this virtualization software, we could click New and it will create a virtual disk for us. You could create two types, a fixed disk or one that expands as needed. Let's use the dynamic one. We'll call the image name the same as the type of Linux and the size of the image, eight gigabytes. That sounds good since we won't be using it for much. Just demonstration in this case. Once we hit finish, we see over in this side, we have a powered off virtual machine. And so if we move this aside and go back to our virtualization paper, essentially what we've created is this Linux pretend ver computer, and we saved ourselves $399. If we come back over here, we could create another computer. Let's create a new computer. Let's call this one Open Solaris. That's another kind of Unix. If we scroll down, we see Solaris is the type. Let's make sure that's the most specific kind. And so we hit Next. Next. Again, there's no hard drive. Instead of having to go out and buy one, we'll create one dynamically. We'll accept the defaults. Finish, and it should put it here. So we have an open Solaris and an open SUSE. Let's go ahead and create another one. And we'll call this one Sent OS. This is another kind of Linux. Some people know it as Red Hat Linux. This is the free version of Red Hat Linux or Community Edition. If it's not listed here, we could go on the Red Hat or we could choose a Linux like this. Click Next. We'll take the default amount of memory, create a new hard disk, and so Next. We actually created three computers, one, two, three, and they're all powered off. 
let's go ahead and close this and let's power up this first Linux click on it and click the start button and if you look at what happens here it will open a window that pretends or looks as though it's its own separate computer within our computer now this message is pretty important because this computer this program thinks it's a separate computer from our own it will capture our mouse so if I click OK and next The way to get out of being capturing the mouse is to click the right control button. Let's go ahead and see what that means. If I'm moving the mouse but you're not seeing anything, that's because the mouse is trapped within this new virtual machine. In order for me to release the mouse, I'm going to hit the right control key on the keyboard. Notice the mouse appears. Now I could move this window around. Now, this may not be immediately obvious why this is happening. It's happening because this computer, this virtual computer, believes that the mouse belongs to it. So it's, notice I could move the mouse in of, inside of this box and outside. Let me click in here and notice the mouse is gone again. I have no control. I can't move it out. So let's hit the control right button again. And now we're back in here. Let's go ahead and start the installation. Boot from hard disk. Now what it's doing is it's trying to boot the operating system from the newly created virtual machine. Now we haven't installed anything so in theory it should find no operating system and it should report to us that nothing can be done. Let me release the mouse and move this to the center while we're waiting. And we'll notice that nothing is actually happening because nothing is, is loaded. Let's go ahead and kill this. Let's power off and bring up the main console for the virtual box. We'll go back to OpenSUSE Linux and start again. This time we'll examine the options more closely. No bootable medium found. System halted. So let's go ahead and close this. Power off. And this time let's tell it to use the CD-ROM from the main computer. Let's try to start it again. It should again boot into the CD-ROM and give us the options to repair the computer to do a new installation or to boot from the hard drive. Now I have the mouse is not yet installed so we'll have to use the up and down arrows. We could test the memory, check different things about the computer. We can't repair it because there's no installation. Let's go ahead and choose installation. And we see we have the installation started. We'll go ahead and click OK on those warnings and we wait for the install media to start up and notice we could move the virtual machine around I'll go ahead and stop the video here while we're waiting and restart it in the next one